Let's turn our Bibles to 2 Timothy, book of 2 Timothy. We're going to look at verses 7 and 8. 2 Timothy, chapter 2, verse 7 and 8. title of the message is A Time to Remember, A Time to Remember, 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 7. Consider what I say, and the Lord give the understanding in all things. Remember, verse 8, remember that Jesus Christ of the seed of David was raised from the dead according to my gospel. Brother Richard, can you pray for the message? Amen. Amen. A time to remember. As we enjoy this memorial holiday weekend, you know, that word memorial, you know, comes to your mind. It's remembering. You know, remembering. And as Christians, there are things that you have to remember. And it gives you opportunity to reflect and remember. Number one thing that you do have to remember is that you and I are a wretched sinner saved by grace. Amen. Nothing more. As Brother Richard gave his you know, great testimony, you, know, you do need to remember the times, say, if you weren't saved without the grace and mercies of God, where you would be. If you and I were to go back to Old Testament days and living in those days, do you think that you'll still be sitting on your pews today? For many of us, we'll be dead already. And for many of us, unfortunately, we might have died in sin and we might be burning. But thank God, you know, for Lord's grace and mercy. Thank God that we're in this, you know, church grace, you know, right? Time of, you know, period where you get saved by faith and faith alone. And Apostle Paul said, remember, right? Remember this gospel. And you and I are saved through this gospel, gospel, the good news. Let's turn our Bibles to 1 Corinthians chapter 15. 1 Corinthians chapter 15. That's why it is very important Number one thing that you do, want to do, after you remember, or you do remember that you are a wretched sinner on your way to hell, think about the gospel of Jesus Christ, the gospel that Apostle Paul is preaching. 1 Corinthians chapter 15, verse 1, the Bible says, Moreover, brethren, I declare you unto you the gospel which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you, unless ye have believed in vain. For I deliver unto you, first of all, that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins, according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day, according to the Scriptures. That's gospel of Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ died for our sins, was buried, right? And resurrected. However, there's danger. Look at verse 2. It says, unless ye have believed in vain. 
there are so many people out there, so-called Christians, people out there who's calling them Christians, who might not be Christian after all. They believed in vain. What does that mean? You know it in your head, but you don't know it in your heart. You know, it happens a lot, especially as young generations grow up in their church, coming to church with their parents. You know, they, they were shown the gospel, and they do sinner's prayer. And not just the young people, but many people, many secular church members. I was attending secular church, you know, before coming to our church. And literally, they were asking me to accept Christ every weekend. You know? They didn't teach any doctrine at all. All they did was, you know, praise and worship and just jump, jump up and down. And that's what I remember. And at the end, they said, okay, let's receive Christ as your Lord and Savior. However, at that moment, do I remember or did I remember that I was a sinner on my way to hell? Did I remember that Jesus Christ is God who died for my sins, shedding his precious blood? Did I remember, you know, with repenting heart, receive Jesus Christ as my Lord and Savior? That's a memory that you should have. If you call yourself a Christian, believer, as they say, if you don't have that memory, then you need to check your salvation. I'm not saying that you're not saved. Don't get me wrong. But however, it is a time, you know, like the message, title of the message says, a time to remember. You need to remember. It's time to reflect. If you don't remember any time in your life where you knew you were a sinner on your way to hell, like the Bible says, for all have sinned and come short of the glory of God, and knowing that as a sinner, you are on your way to hell, because the Bible says in Revelation 21, 8, but the fearful and unbelieving and abominable murderers, whoremongers, sorcerers, idolaters, and all liars. You and I are included in that group, no matter what. All liars shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is a second death. Do you remember? Do you remember that you and I, are a sinner on our way to hell. We're born as a sinner on our way to hell. We don't go to hell because we commit sin, right? Because we're already born as a sinner. That's the only thing that we can do. We commit sin because of Adam and Eve, unfortunately. Then if you realize that you are a sinner on your way to hell, but you don't want to burn in hell, then... What should you believe in? Do you remember what you were supposed to believe in? Do you remember what you were supposed to know? Bible says what? Romans 5, 8. But God commended his love toward us in that while we are yet sinners, Christ died for us. You and I, do you remember? You and I were supposed to burn in hell for eternity. But Jesus Christ died for all of our sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood. And it's a past tense. God showed all his love at the Calvary already. John 3, 16, right? Then, if you remember that part, that's good. And if those of you who don't remember, then you need to start believing, right? Don't believe it in your head. You know, believe it in your heart. Don't make it a person who ends up in hell, like verse 2 says, unless ye have believed in vain. You got to look at your heart. Then, if you knew, if you remember you were a sinner on your way to hell, if you remember that Jesus Christ died for your sins, then what else do you remember? You know, repentance toward God and faith to our Lord Jesus Christ. You know, twofold, right? Do you remember having a repenting heart when you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, right? You know, sometimes people make a very complicated deal with repentance. Repentance just simply means change of mind. Knowing that you are a sinner, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, and you want the Lord to save you. That's the mindset. 
Literally, it's that mindset. How many of you guys can honestly say, you know what, I don't care. You know, I'm going to go out there and smoke. I'm going to go out there and steal. I'm going to go out there and kill. I accept Christ. Save me. Is that a repenting heart? No. Repenting heart is where you truly know that you are a sinner on your way to hell, right? And you want God to save you by his mercy, right? With that kind of heart, do you remember having that heart, repenting heart? And with that, Bible says in Romans 10, 9, that if thou shalt confess with thy mouth the Lord Jesus and shalt believe in thine heart that God has raised him from the dead, thou shalt be saved. For with the heart man believeth unto righteousness, and with the mouth confession is made unto salvation. The Bible says, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Knowing that, remembering that, have you trusted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Lord means God. The Bible says, Without controversy, great is the mystery of godliness. God was manifest in the flesh. God became a man and died for you. Who is that? Jesus Christ. Then, as you check your memory, do you, do you remember at least one time, just one time in your life, where you realized you are a sinner on your way to hell? You believe that Jesus is God who died for your sins. With a repenting heart, received him, in your heart, not your brain, right? In your heart as your Lord and Savior. Because John 1.12 says, But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. That's Lord Jesus Christ. If you receive Jesus Christ in your heart as your Lord and Savior, knowing that you are a sinner on your way to hell, believe that, you know, he die for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, then the Bible says you have eternal life. You know, for many people, many Bible believers, you know, one of the favorite verses are 1 John chapter 5, verse 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13. You know, just go to that, right? He that hath the Son has life. He that hath not the Son of God has not life. These things have I, read, these things have I written unto you, that believe on the name of the Son of God, that ye may know that ye have eternal life. Do you remember a time in your life when you accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior, knowing that you were a sinner on your way to hell, knowing that only his precious blood can wash your sins, knowing that you have to trust him as your Lord and Savior to get saved, from eternal lake of fire. It's time to remember. If you remember, God bless you, brother and sister, because you're saved. There's no reason that you should worry about ever burning in hell if you trust that Christ in your heart is your Lord and Savior. However, if you have any doubts, right? If you have any doubts, if you have even a one in a trillion percentage of a doubt, where you think that you believed in vain, you have to get it right. You do not want to take that chance. I'm glad that I did not take that chance. And I accepted Christ over and over and over for years, but not truly knowing the true gospel, right? Not knowing through the word of God that, you know, I must realize I'm a sinner on my way to hell. Believe that Jesus is God who died for my sins. With repenting heart, accepting my heart as my Lord and Savior. I did not know. Because no one ever showed me through the word of God. All they did was, you know, just sing along, you know, jump up and down. And then with that kind of, you know, you know like emotional state, just ask Christ. There are so many people who are being deceived and will burn in hell because of that method that Satan uses, using music to make people emotional, lustful, and have them repeat after a prayer, and falsely thinking that they're saved. If you were that person, if you remember it that way, then you definitely need to get saved the right way, right? 
And there's only one way, right? Through the word of God, right? Only one way. By asking Christ to come into your heart as your Lord and Savior. Do you remember? For many, you do remember the day when you accepted Christ. For many, you do remember the state you were in when you accepted Christ. However, you stop remembering. What happens when you stop remembering? Right? Just like Church of Ephesus, you have left the first love. When you don't remember, what happens? That love dries up. When you don't remember, you don't have that same fire for that person. When you don't remember, you tend to not care about that person. And that person is Lord Jesus Christ. Do you remember Lord Jesus Christ? Are you remembering Lord Jesus Christ? It's time for you to remember. There's a story. It's a famous story. I'm pretty sure many of you guys heard it before. There's a variation. So follow along with me. Once there were three old sisters who lived together. One sister got up to go to bed, and halfway up the stairs, she stopped and asked, was I going up or was I going down? One sister replied with a hint of aggravation, you were going up to bed. Come on, darling. A second sister headed into the kitchen to make herself a sandwich. Once in the kitchen, she hollered back to her sister, who was still downstairs. What did I come in here for? The sister responded again, but this time a little more annoyed than the last time when she replied to Darlene. Because you went in to make yourself a sandwich. I'm so glad. This is the third sister who was annoyed by the first sister and the second sister. Third sister goes, I'm so glad I am not as forgetful as the both of you are. She said as she knocked on the wood on the table. Then she got up. She walked over to the door and said, who is it? Maybe you have to listen to it twice. <laughs> I'll repeat myself, OK? This third sister, right, who talked to Darlene, right, and they mean, OK? And her name is Dodo. And she goes, you know, I'm so glad I am not as forgetful as both of you are, Darlene. And I forgot her name. <laughs> Knock on wood. And she got up, walked over to the door, and she said, who is it? So when she heard, just for the young audience who might not understand, you know, when she knocked on the wood, right, she thought someone was knocking on the door. And now he's laughing, so he understands now. You know. That's how it is, right? A lot of times, you see other people not remembering and you criticize, right? At the end of the day, you look at yourself, and you don't remember either. You are that person, you are that dodo, right? Who criticized Darlene and Dayoung or something, you know, her two other sisters, right? And then not looking at herself, not remembering. How often is it, you know, when you forget to remember Jesus Christ, right? You're sitting in this pew, right? And you are praising the Lord, and you start looking around, and you don't see people around, and you're like, oh, man, they don't remember Jesus Christ. They don't remember Jesus Christ. She doesn't remember Jesus Christ. He doesn't remember Jesus Christ. But at the end of the day, you're doing that on yourself, and then you knock on wood, and then you start asking, who is it? You forget who you are. You forget to remember who you are. That's why you fall into this temptation you fall into many of the pitfalls that devil put in place. Why? You don't remember who you are. That's something, that's a reminder I have to tell myself every single day. You know, because of my old nature. You know, when you're saved, you have old nature and a new nature. You have to remember that every day. Your old nature will destroy you. 
that flesh will try to destroy you. Your new nature is something that you need to harbor on, right? I mean, I don't want to beat the dead horse, but I say this over and over again. I mean, have you prayed this morning, you know, to be filled with the Holy Ghost today, right? Have you asked the Lord to be filled with the Holy Spirit today? Because there's only two directions you're going to go on a day, right? Be filled with the Holy Ghost day or be filled with flesh day? Be filled with Holy Ghost, living a holy life? Or be filled with the flesh, living a sinful life? Be filled with the Holy Ghost, living a life that brings glory to God? Or be filled with spirit, I mean flesh life, you know, bringing all the glory to the devil, right? Then if you haven't done it today, what does that tell you? You're not remembering right. You remember wrong things. Many times, people get down because of their memories. I wonder how many of you guys try to be a Debbie Downer because you think about or you remember those days, right? For some, you say, I was living better financially before I got saved. And you're a Debbie Downer. Would you want to replace, exchange your wealth with eternal salvation? I mean, I don't know how someone in the right state of mind could say, I want to replace my salvation with anything. I mean, money? You know, some people might say, before I got saved, you know, I had a better relationship with my family. Is your family saved? If not, maybe there's an issue. However, would you not get saved so that you could be living, you know, happy and jolly with your family? Wouldn't you want to get saved so that your, your, all of your family can get saved? I mean, and some people might say, you know, before I got saved, you know, I had more friends. After I got saved, you know, a lot of my friends left me, realizing that, you know, I'm a Christian. Or even further on, realizing that I am a Bible-believing Christian, you know, standing up for King James Bible, right? You know, standing up for the right doctrine, going out there, street preaching, and, you know, doing visitation. Are they more worth it to you than what a friend we have in Jesus? Come on. They're not your real friend if they're willing to leave you because you stand up for Jesus Christ. You pray for them, you witness to them, that's the best that you can do. But who would you rather have as your friend? Jesus Christ or the world? That's why some some Christians, they try to be remembered, lovable, in every part of their life, in every part of the place that they go to. They want to be most lovable at work. They want to be most lovable at school. They want to be most lovable wherever they go, fast food restaurant, restaurant. Man, they, they need waiters to love them. They need you know, servers to, busboys. Everybody has to love them, right? One person that you need to think about, and the only love that you need to think about is Lord Jesus Christ. And everything else falls into the place, right? If you have love like Christ's love, then you love your wife and your husband better than ever before. If you have a love like Christ's love, you love your children better than before. You, you have love like Christ's love, you love your coworkers, your bosses, anybody, your schoolmates more than, better than before. Why is it that you don't remember Christ's love? Right? That's the number one love that you have to remember. Christ, what did he do? He sacrificed his life for you and me. And we're talking about Lord Jesus Christ. It's time to remember, we're not talking about just a man. 
right? We're not talking about just a Jewish person, right? We're talking about God himself. How often do you forget that you serve a risen Savior who is God? You know, sometimes it blows my mind, and it should blow your mind, that we have a Savior, we have a friend, we have our Lord, who is God himself. Can you imagine? How many of you guys, when you get paper cut, you know, you yelp or you scream? I'm sure some of you guys, right? How many of you guys, you know, when you stub your toe, it's like the worst feeling you've ever had in your life? Yeah? Those hurt. You and I are super weak, to say the least. How many of you guys, when you can't see for even five seconds, the whole world is over, right? How many of you guys, when you can hear for a few seconds, like you don't know what to do, right? Sometimes, you know, explosions right next to your ear or something for, you know, some loud noises, you lose that sense of hearing for a few seconds, and you're like, man, my world's done, right? You and I, when you realize it, we're very weak. We're super weak. I mean, we're nothing but dust. You know, like Book of Isaiah said, you and I, we're like less than nothing. When you remember that you are less than nothing and you get more appreciative, you become more thankful about what Lord Jesus Christ did for you and me. Think about the sacrifice he had to go through. His sacrifice had to tow, shed all of his precious blood for you and me. Can you imagine if you had to drop every single blood for somebody in a painful way on the cross? But he did that for you and me. That's the Savior you and I serve. That's the Savior you and I have accepted in our heart as our Lord and Savior. He's inside of you if you have trusted him as your Lord and Savior. Do you remember that God who created the universe is inside of you, right? Then, if you do remember, would you do the things that you will be doing in many instances, in many cases? Think about it. When he died for you, he did it unconditionally. Unconditional love is probably the greatest thing out there. I mean, he loved you without any condition. There's a true, true, I guess, true, true camaraderie, true love, true chemistry between a man and a woman when they love each other with unconditional love. They do not care about you know, their background. They do not care about anything. They just love them as exactly as who they are. Whether they, how should I say, you know, they have fault at this place, they have fault at that place, but they just love them as who they are. And those are the type of marriages that will last, right? And those are the type of marriage where there will be continuous growth of love. When Jesus Christ died for your sins on the cross, shedding his precious blood, you have to remember he did it unconditionally. You have to remember he showed all his love. You have to remember, and he is God who did that for his enemy. And when you remember those things, your life pattern and the way you treat others, the way you treat your husband and wife, the way you treat your brethren, the way you treat your children will completely change. Do I love my father, mother, wife, husband, children like how Christ loved me? Then there will be less arguments, there will be less needless bickering, there will be less gossiping, 
there will be less, whatever you mean it, anger, right? There will be less hurting each other inside the church, inside the family, inside anywhere. That's why you have to remember what Christ did for you. You have to remember Christ lives inside of me. You have to remember how do I live each day as Christ liveth in me. I mean, you and I sing that hymn, right? Christ liveth in me. Do you mean it? For many, you just sing it. You don't mean it. But for you now, starting now, you should really mean it. If Christ liveth in me, if I do remember what Christ has done for me, then how will you show that memorial to the Lord and to the others? That's something only you can answer in your heart, right? Don't look at someone next to you, behind you. If you do remember what Christ has done for you, and if you do remember his love, and if you do remember that he liveth in you, how will you live rest of your life? How will you live every single day? How will you wake up every single day? How will you go to bed every single day? How will your conversation be every single day? How will you read his word every single day? How will you talk to him every single day? Every, every single moment, your life will be Christ-centered and it will be changed. Until that day, you have to keep on working. You have to keep on remembering. As we commemorate and remember Memorial Day weekend, it's more important than ever that you remember Lord Jesus Christ and what he has done for you and how you will live for him the rest of your life. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for saving us from hell through the precious blood of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. We don't deserve it. We're nothing but a wretched sinner on our way to hell. But by your grace and mercy, you have saved us when we trust that Christ as our Lord and Savior. Heavenly Father, but because of our filthy ways and sinful ways, we forget what the Lord has done for us and why we are here on earth. Heavenly Father, help us to remember what you have done every single day so that we could do unto others how you have done for us. All your provision, your sacrifice, and the love that you have shown us and continue to show us. Help us to do that to our family, to our brethren, and lost souls out there. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you, everyone.